Stay a very good afternoon, a good evening, and or a good morning to whatever part of the world you're joining us from today. So today I'm very super excited in hosting this show on behalf of the Asian Foundation and their team members who are here, the CEO the founder member, and also the chairperson, Mr. Hasubai Devani, who's joined us on the Zoom session. Uh, the CEO, Mira Pandit, and the founder member is coming along in a few minutes. So super excited to have a super awesome speaker with us. And who is she? Uh, none other than Tavalin Chandok. Who is she? Let us find out about her. And she is a handwriting expert. A graphologist is what they call her. She is analyzing people's handwriting to make their characters better, their performance better. She's advising on amazing things that one can achieve through handwriting. So let's talk about Tavalin first. She is a young girl and she doesn't mind revealing her age. She's only 25 and a very entrepreneurial young girl. She is a co-founder of what they call their company, Garphonomics. Young and a dynamic girl with her master's in literature from Pandit Dindayal Petroleum University in Gandhinagar in Gujarat. She is a certified graphologist, a graphotherapist, a counselor, and an inspiring writer. As her own startup, she co-founded Graphonomics with her friend and partner, Ms. Priya Detroja. Graphonomics carries out corporate and personal workshops, analysis, and a one-to-one -one counseling using the scientific art of graphology to assist people to develop and balance their emotion, their career, their health, their mental well-being, and relationships. And you know what? I have a few things about Tavalin, but there is a super awesome gentleman 
who knows a lot more about tabling. This inspiring, motivating gentleman has been on our Zoom session previously, a inspiring speaker from India, a very intelligent man who rocks the world right now. He's none other than Dr. Bhagirat Jadeja, who will take about a minute, minute and a half to introduce further this super awesome speaker that we have. So without further delay, may I ask our Zooming host, Mrs. Meena bin Khagram, to actually spotlight our dear Dr. Bhagirat Jadeja to further introduce and when Dr. Jadeja is finished introducing, I will take over. Thank you, Dr. Bhagirat. How are you? Good evening, Lalit Bhai. I'm fine. How are you? Can I hand you over to, to, to introduce Tabeline, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. And hello to everyone. A very good evening. It's always an honor and pleasure to be here on this platform. And as uh, I was speaking to Mina Auntie the other day on phone, it's like being in the family again. So it's always a pleasure and honor. Uh, you know, uh, as a life coach, people often ask me that, you um, know, when li do life coaches, they get depressed? Do they also have issues? And if they have issues, whom do they approach? So I always say, yes, we all are humans and we always have issues. So, you know, people always ask me, whom do you approach? Now, let me tell you, this young girl who is going to speak today, I have seen her entire journey. I have seen her journey when she used to sit in my sessions in the second, third row at the back, avoiding my gaze. Okay, no, you know, this person should not catch me. From there, she is now going to address this platform. That's the journey that I have seen. And, and, and it's amazing how she deals with people. You know, in the time when we all are facing issues worldwide, when people are having, you know, the dark faces and they are having questions about who they are, what they should do, how they should do, Taolin is one person who, with her enormous skills of graphology, is reaching out to people and helping them tackle those issues in a very simplest available way. And that's really amazing. I mean, if I ask someone as a life coach, to, okay, go and do some meditation. You need to do meditation and yoga for you know, these much time and these many hours. They will not do it. But she just says, okay, go and write these sentences or do this pattern for at least 10 minutes a day. And they feel a significant change. And I'm telling this from my personal experience that there was a phase where I also needed some therapy to come out of some things that I was facing. And this little girl helped me a lot. And, and I'm really looking forward to what she's going to do today. And I would like to give it back to Lalit Bhai by one last sentence. That is uh, when I was in US uh, and I was getting trained under Tony, so when I took my first session on the stage, there was Tony sitting there smiling. And I asked him after session, okay, what were you thinking and why were you smiling? He said, you will not realize that because it is something that I cannot express. So he also added, okay, you know, when the time will come, you will know. So somewhere I am feeling the same thing. This girl, I'll tell all the people who are listening out there, listen to her because she is having the simplest but profound things that can actually help the people out there because philosophies are good in listening, but she has actions that can help people out there. Really looking forward. She is really a bunch of miracles which she is going to share with all of us. Over to you, Lalit Bhai. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, by the way. Not a problem. Thank you very much, Dr. Jariaja. It's a pleasure to have you on board with us. Always excited, always smiling, always inspirational. So thank you. Now, thank without you. further delay, we have this super awesome lady here, 
from the CEO of Asian, as the CEO of the Asian Foundation, none other than Meera Pandit. Now, let me tell you about this lady too. She is actually welcoming Tavaline on behalf of the Asian Foundation, but she herself is a philanthropic lady, a humanitarian, a philanthropist, a social worker. Mira is a driven individual with an enthusiastic personality, a humanitarian with experience in multitude of lead roles concerned with promoting human and social welfare. Since 2015, Mira and her committee continues to work currently. She actually works as the CEO of the Asian Foundation in Kenya and a CSO and passionately promoting social reform and welfare, focusing on philanthropy and development. Her career graph has led her to be actively involved in diplomatic uh, uh, corporations. She represented embassies as the lead intergovernmental focal point to the United Nations Environmental Program and the United Nations Humanitarian Settlement Program, focusing on environmental sustainability and rural uh, urban housing. She represents the foundation at the UNHCR Statelessness Working Group, in addition to representing the foundation at the annual conference on statelessness in Geneva. Advent promoter in the global UNHCR hashtag I belong statelessness campaign. Alongside other fellow jurors, she's been part of the jury of the coveted annual Tava Awards. This is the Asian Weekly Achievement Awards. She was a committee member of the planning and coordinating committee for the PM, uh, for the Prime Minister Modiji's diaspora visit to Kenya. Mira strives to give back to the society in the hope of better, bettering people's lives. Mira, over to you, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Greetings from the Asian Foundation. I hope I'm audible to everybody. Absolutely. Welcome to Tavleen, a young lady who had a pleasure of speaking to a couple of weeks ago um, on this amazing and mystical and a bit controversial subject. Um, here at the Foundation, from all of us at the board, we hope and pray that everyone joining in including you, Tavlin, and your family are all keeping safe and well during these testing times. And I think this topic is very crucial, especially to well-being from what I read about you. So I look forward to engaging and learning more about this mystical journey of yours. Um, protocol dictates that I sh should take a bit of time and talk about the Asian Foundation. Our founding chairman um, is actually on board and he'll have to jump off because he's got a prayer meeting. So I'd like to recognize him, Dr. Manu Chandaria, a uh, founding member of our Asian Foundation. We established it in 88. So Manu, by welcome. Um, so in a nutshell, the ethos of Asian Foundation has and continues to be transforming lives and communities through philanthropy. Now I'm often asked, what, well, well, what do you guys do? The thing is, what don't we do? We do so much that it's so hard to quantify the art of giving in terms of numbers or writing about it. So it's a bit difficult because there is no uh, limit to it. And I'm sure everyone who's joined in feels the same way. There are a few projects that we're currently engaged in. Recently, we have launched a mentorship program under the vice chairmanship of Smitha. If anybody would like to be a mentor or a mentee, please get in touch with us. It's a phenomenal program. We do have our weekly legal pro bono clinics, which has been happening for 10 years. Um, it is being head by Dr. Uh, Mr. Aureola Rubello with Arun by Kantari and myself. We are recently focusing on the work on statelessness and we hope and pray that that is successful for the people. We also have engaged in Asian culture and history, Asian's journey to Kenya. And uh, we have an entire gallery dedicated at the National Museums of Kenya on this. We're in partnership with the Chandaria Foundation, the Asian African Heritage Trust, 
and the Sai Memorial. These are a few things to talk about the Asian Foundation. However, we're not here to focus on us. We're here to focus on this great graphology topic, which I am extremely intrigued um, to hear about. From my heart to all of yours, we wish you well, keep safe. And yes, if Manubai is still on, I would like him to say a few things. And I'd like to recognize the chairman of the foundation who will address everyone later on. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Mira, very much. Manubai Chandaria is actually with us. Uh, Manubai, can you unmute yourself or Mina Ben can help you unmute? And we are super excited. Thank you for joining with us uh, despite all your commitments. And we are honored, truly honored by your presence, Manubai. Welcome on board. Manubai, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, can Thank you hear you. me now? Yes, we can, can hear you, hear you now. now. Welcome on board, Manubai. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's a great pleasure to have somebody so young, the age of 25, uh, addressing a crowd. Uh, and to tell her, I'm 91. So to understand from her the part of life what she thinks that what it should be, it's very interesting. I welcome everybody and wish you a wonderful understanding of what she has told. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manubai. A great pleasure to have the founder of the Asian Foundation. What a privilege we have to have Manubai with us. Thank you, Manubai, once again from all of us. Now, the program doesn't carry on, Tavilene, till we have this wonderful senior, I would like to say 75 year young lady who zooms around the world and has set up this lovely um, sessions for every Saturday to inspire people and to bring so many different kinds of people on this platform. Without her formal traditional welcome, the Zoom session doesn't carry on. So Tavilin, we have our lovely Mrs. Meena Ben Khagram all the way from Nakuru to actually formally traditionally welcome you and then we'll continue with your talk. Meena Ben, if I may request you, to formally welcome our speaker. Devlin, can you see me? Yeah, that's my husband, Hi. Ramesh. And Devlin, I'm going to do one nice tilak and choka and give me this flower. Something for you. Ah, that's so nice. And Devlin, welcome. Thank you very much. Global Namaskar to all. Karibu. Om Mani Padme Ham. Welcome to all to Nakuru town of world famous flamingos, wildlife, and where fastest marathon runners in the world are born. Dr. Lalit and myself are super excited to welcome you, Tavlin. Beautiful name, meaning engrossed in God. You call Ganeshji Ganu, that's for you. Oh. Your Ganu. And you have stayed in Dharamshala for a month and helping Tibetan people. That is very divine. I want to share that we have something in common. Here is a Dalai Lama in his signature. So we also do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, my welcome is not finished if I don't introduce the backbone of this session, Dr. Lalit Soda, trendy looking and my kid cousin, is a world popular chiropractic. He is an international speaker, author of a book, Pushti Marag, in English, 
for new generation. He's a yoga instructor and loves trekking mountains all over the world. Tevlin, he loves football as well, so you can play with him. <laughs> Here, back to you, Lalit Bhai. Thank you, Mina Ben. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. And you know what? Without further taking anybody's time and respecting every guest who has joined us on board today, let us hear what this young 25-year-old has to tell us about graphology and handwriting and what that can lead us to. So, Tavlin, welcome on board. I want everybody who's got their videos on, I want everybody to give her an ovation to welcome Tavlin to be participating with us and thanking her for her valuable time that she's giving us. Tavlin, welcome on board. Thank you. After Tavlin, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Lalit sir, Meena auntie, Asian Foundation for such an overwhelming uh, welcome. And uh, I really want to thank you for giving us and the speakers this opportunity and such beautiful platform to share our views, to share our knowledge. I would also like to thank Dr. Bhagirat C. Jareja. I mean, I have never said this, but so whatever I am today and whatever knowledge I impart in myself, it is, I owe everything to you. Thank you for that. And, um, uh, hello to everyone. Hope all of you are doing fine within this pandemic. So let's start the session uh, with the topic and that is handwriting is brain writing. I just want to start the session with this question that what struck you or what struck the audience when they, when they read this sentence, handwriting is brain writing. So can anybody just tell me or share their views what, what got into their mind when they read the session or when they read about graphology as a subject? Anybody who, who nani choto please, eo na karo mari saath hai. Anybody? We, we won't unmute anybody. However, okay. if we get a comment on chat box, because otherwise what will happen is yes, there will no be a lot of echo coming around. Okay, no problem. So anybody can, uh, who can, whoever has this on their mind, they can just write down in the chat box. Perfect, perfect, yes. So I'll tell you what, what, what struck me, if that's okay with you. I'm thinking yes. handwriting is brain writing. So I'm thinking, how is my handwriting going to determine brain thinking? So that's a thought provoking statement. So it's definitely provoked a thought in my mind as to, Huh, what is this? Interesting. That's what I would say. Definitely. So when Curiosity. I... Okay, yes, definitely. So when I first read this sentence, I also had the same things. That was the time back in my uh, college days, I actually did not know about graphology much. And it really intrigued me that what is this about and how can you actually know the patterns of your thoughts which are going in your brain through your handwriting. So to know more about it, let's, let's start with my own journey, which uh, started from my 10th standard. That is, I was always a child who was bit confused and bit more inclined towards adventure. I always wanted some new things happening in my life to keep me upgraded. So when I completed my 10th standard, I, I went for science into my 11th and 12th, and then I took commerce, then I took arts. So I have had all the things in my life, arts, commerce, science. And when I was in my college days, I had uh, uh, one of the person who just came up to me and uh, she said that, can you just give me a sample? Can you just write me a sample? And I will exactly tell you what's going on in your mind. I said, okay. So when I was a child, I always had that one thing within me that I want to know what's going on in people's mind. 
એવું બધાને હોય આઈ ગેસ પીપલ સિટિંગ હિયર વિલ વિલ કનેક્ટ કે સામે વાળાના મગજમાં શું ચાલે છે એ જાણવું હોય એન્ડ એન્ડ વેન યુ આર યંગ વેન યુ આર ઇમર્જિંગ યુ ઓલવેઝ વોન્ટ ટુ નો દેટ સો આઈ વોઝ ઓલ્સો વન ઓફ ધેમ દેટ આઈ વોન્ટ ટુ નો વોટ ગોઈંગ ઓન ઇન માય માઇન્ડ એન્ડ હાઉ કેન યુ એનાલાઇઝ દેટ સો શી સેટ જસ્ટ ગીવ મી અ સેમ્પલ એન્ડ આઈ ગેવ ઇટ ટુ હ એન્ડ she she told me couple of things she told me two or three things and with the fourth thing when she entered the the next the second part she said that you have a wavering mind and you cannot stick to one thing you need to jump on to different things to have an adventurous and exciting life and i was completely shocked because i said you were to so i was so very much intrigued to know so very much curious to know about what on the earth made her so talented to actually know what what trait i was uh, dealing with so i just asked her that how did you analyze this and she said that this is this is a mixture of science as well as art and it is known as graphology i said okay and my next question to her was that okay it is based on handwriting so why isn't it called handwritology or handwriting analysis why is it called graphology to which she beautifully answered that it is a study of graphs it is not just the study of handwriting but it is also the study of graphs based on that handwriting i said please elaborate and she said that whenever a person writes as a graphologist we always stick to the wavelength of your handwriting the patterns of each and every letter so as a graphologist when i am analyzing anybody's handwriting i always go with letter by letter i will not stick to words i will not stick to sentences i will not even read the paragraph but i will check on to every pattern of that letter i said okay fair enough and that's when i actually knew what i wanted to do in my life but was when when i am connected with a subject called graphology i also start getting connected to people and their experiences which are completely different which which brings me something exciting something adventurous and that's how i started my journey as graphologist so when we talk about graphology as a science there are some basic concepts we, which we need to understand before analyzing any sample our brain is connected with two different parts that is your subconscious mind and your conscious mind your subconscious mind deals with 80% of your uh, thoughts and 20% is dealt with conscious mind now what happens is people usually come to me and ask ke mane to divas ma 60000 vicharo aave chhe so how uh, how will you be able to kind of connect with each and every thoughts to which i always reply ke mare 60000 vicharo ne nahi pakadvana mare tame e 60000 vicharo mathi je 60 vicharo sathe vatu karo cho ne ene pakadvana chhe the thoughts which you entertain becomes the things in your life they become your character statement so i just need to figure out those thoughts which you are entertaining so let's take an example my own example i am i am never on time i am very much late i am i am not at all punctual and my friends who are actually viewing this or or uh, who all are uh, kind of uh, who all have joined in the in the session they would be laughing or smiling somewhere but yes i'm never on time now how did this happen because for 12 years continuously i was going to school on time i was attending my sessions on time so how did it suddenly intrigued me that that i i was i was labeled as a late comer so what happened is when i started sleeping late 
it actually ended up for me to waking up to to kind of waking up late so this was registered in my thoughts hu jare bhi office jati mane sauthi pehla puchvama aavtu that why are you late so so i used to always answer that i wake up late to which again they used to question that okay so why do you wake up late to which i used to answer because i sleep late now what happens is these are mere thoughts in your mind that i sleep late that's why i wake up late and that's why i am reaching late now when i say this to other person my words are reassuring this thoughts in my mind when you start up something new tumne kai ne kai reassurance jo the same way your brain or your mind needs reassurance and that reassurance is given through your words your words are then changed into actions when i am reaching late to my office i will start my work late i will not be able to finish my deadlines those are my actions and when my actions are combined as a whole they become my habit when my habit it out is outstretched in different fields that is from my career to my to my personal life or to my relationship that becomes my character so this is how the chain is formed from my from my thoughts to my words to my actions to my habit to my character so as graphologist i only have to stick to your character or to your characteristics and then i go back to your thoughts we just need to break the chain of that thought and we just need to kind of say change that thought or or intervene that pattern and give another pattern to resolve our complications i'll give you another example that is people usually usually keep alarm to wake up i do that and i guess most of us do that and there are two types of people one is ke jene sana athe uthu hoy ne to e sana ath no alarm mukse and the other one is jene sana athe uthu hoy ne e ath waga thi alarm chalu karse i am one of them 8 10 actually need a a tone at 8 to wake up at 8:30 this is our thought this is our pattern now this thought actually changes into belief system what happens is when as a child when a child is young between 0 to 14 years of age he or she creates a belief system i i was a teacher before 2 years i was into teaching field and mari pase ghana parents aata and they used to tell me ke uh, my child does not eat properly or he does not read or or he does not listen to me so my first question to them was tame vacho sho tame ne kyo chhe ki tv na jo tame tv band karo chho to which they used to answer no so whatever you show to your child becomes his belief system tamare koi ni pase kai karavo hoy tamare tamara balak pase kai karavo hoy you need to show it into actions tame j e na batao to that that child is not going to register that in his thought process in his brains so for that you will need actions that creates whatever actions he or she as a child sees in his surrounding creates his belief system now our our work as graphologist is to challenge that be belief system or is to find out that pattern in that belief system and break that pattern 
now whenever the pattern is broken whenever something is broken we need as human beings we need something else to cling upon smoking chhodwo hoy or drinking chhodwo hoy so you will need something else so that your brain is working in the same way or channelized in the other way for that we have graphotherapies that is the basic pattern of handwritings or mere changes in handwriting which actually intervenes your channelized process in which your brain thinks i i would like to share one of my personal examples and that is uh, when i was in 10th standard couple of people knows this and when i was in 10th standard i met with an accident on a mara mara spinal cord ma uh, crack saivata because of which i had to undergo three operations now what happened was i was in the hospital uh, between those meds injections and blood bottles and glucose bottles and what not and my dad was called by the doctor on a am ni cabin ma gaya and my dad was was told ke please bring a wheelchair and uh, please send her to any of the centers where people teach her how to how to do certain things by her own sitting on the wheelchair because i don't think so she will ever be able to walk in her life this was the sentence which was thrown upon by the doctor to my dad to which my dad replied ke my daughter will be standing in your cabin within 6 months and i promise that after one month i returned back to my home from the hospital and i had two things i had two scenarios in front of me one was my grandfather used to cry in front of me je manas ne me kyare namta nahi joya ne emne me mari same rota joya ch my mother used to cry my grandmother used to cry and the second scenario was my dad who did everything just to see me on my feet again and second was my physiotherapist who actually gave every inch of his knowledge to make me walk so what happened was i i always say that i am standing on my feet and i am all right is because of these two people and the third thing is the immaturity and my age the immaturity of my thoughts never in my in my kind of a journey of that 6 months never ever i had a single thought that i will not be able to walk in my life i was paralyzed under my uh, waistline but i always thought ke mari mate ek je hurdle che e maru e maru right foot no fracture che the day that plaster gets out i'll be able to walk that was my thought maybe i would have been in this age i wouldn't wouldn't have say overcome that kind of that operation or that state but just because i never thought or i was never serious about my journey or my operations i always took it in a way okay fine i am on a bed rest because i have the plaster once this is removed i will be back to normal and trust me the day my plaster got removed the same evening i was on my leg i was on my feet i was walking and till today it's been it 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 has been 10 years nobody can tell me that i have undergone three operations i cannot do anything in my life uh, as a normal person nobody can state that so i uh, whenever i come across people or whenever people come to me um uh, by by saying that i have i have got this problems in my life or i am facing uh, such problems i always tell them that please focus on your thoughts and please change your thoughts because 
because no doctor no psychologist or no graphologist can know you better than yourself we are here to facilitate them but if you really want to help yourself it is you who can help yourself and just by changing one thought you can change a lot of things in your life there is there is one more example that is accident થાયને તો ડોક્ટર ની જરૂર પડે પણ એક્સિડેન્ટ અટકાવો હોય ને તો તમારે ડ્રાઇવિંગ શીખવું પડે એની માટે ડોક્ટર ની જરૂર ન પડે સો તમારો એક્સિડેન્ટ થાય યુ કમ ટુ અસ વી હેવ અ લોટ ઓફ થિંગ્સ વિચ કેન એક્ચ્યુઅલી મોલ્ડ યુ વિચ કેન એક્ચ્યુઅલી ચેનલાઇઝ યોર બ્રેઇન ઓર યોર પેટર્ન્સ but if you don't want that accident to happen every day sit with yourself every day think what you don't have to think and people usually come up to me and say ke meditation nahi thatu meditation karu na to mane satat vicharo aave chhe definitely pan e vicharo sathe tamare vato nahi karvani vicharo aave ema problem nahi પણ વિચારો સાથે તમે વાતો કરો છો ને એ પ્રોબ્લેમ છે તમારે વિચારો નથી લાવવાના એવું નથી દેટ ઇઝ નોટ આવર વર્ક વિચારોને વિચારો સાથે વાતો નથી કરવાની વિચારોને એન્ટરટેન નથી કરવાના દેટ ઇઝ અવર વર્ક સો દિસ ઇઝ ઓલ એઝ અ એઝ અ કમ્પ્લીટ ગ્રાફોલોજી which only works on the basis of thoughts now if i talk about different aspects of life uh one thing i always always say that is ke mane manso avine u puche ke nana hata ne when we were small our teacher used to teach different type of writings the nilian writing cursive writing so she used to draw it on the she used to write it on the board and the child needs to copy in the notebook so if one teacher the same teacher who is teaching 25 students in a row how can those 25 students be different personalities because they are being taught the same letter the same pattern so how this how how will handwriting play, play a vital role there what happens is when a teacher draws or when a teacher makes any pattern on the board the child is copying that pattern but he cannot make an exact copy of that pattern he will surely make some or the other difference in that letter and that minor difference is your trait your thought your character now when you go back check out your couple of handwriting tumhari 5th standard ni writing card jo tumhari 10th standard ni writing card jo tumhari college ni writing card jo none of them will be same why because your surroundings have changed your traits have changed you as a character has changed so how how uh, can we intervene that process or or how can we change the process so i want to go back to my first example je me kidu tu ke i am labeled as late comer now if i want to break that change or if i want to change that pattern માણસો છે ને હંમેશા એક ભૂલ કરે છે કે આવું કંઈક આવે ને એટલે દે લોલવેઝ ટેક અપોન કે મારે સવારે વહેલું ઉઠવું છે ને એટલે મને રાતના વહેલી ઊંઘ આવી જોઈએ ધીસ ઇઝ ધ થોટ મને રાતના વહેલી ઊંઘ આવે હું વહેલો સુઈ જાઉં હું સવારે વહેલો ઉઠી જઈશ મને રાતના વહેલી ઊંઘ આવે હું વહેલો સુઈ જાઉં તો સવારે વહેલો ઉઠી જઈશ બટ ઊંઘ આવવી એ તમારા હાથમાં નથી વહેલું સુઈ જવું એ તમારા હાથમાં નથી શું તમારા હાથમાં છે વહેલું ઉઠવું તો વોટ શુડ બી યોર થોટ મારે કાલે સવારે વહેલું ઉઠવું છે કાંઈ બી થઈ જાય આઈ વિલ વેક અપ અર્લી ઇન ધ મોર્નિંગ 
Now with this thought, there are chances or there may be chances that you won't be able to sleep for two nights. You won't be able to sleep for two nights. You won't be able to sleep for two nights. tension ma loko ne ung no aave but from the third day your body will demand sleep and automatically that will form a pattern ke tame raat na vela soi ja because that's the demand of your body so don't focus on the problems focus on the outcomes tamare su joy che and change your thought according to those outcomes there's a a beautiful talk show which i was uh, hearing couple of days back a uh, sports scientist che shyamal vallabh ji i don't know if people have heard the name or not and he is one of my favorite and if no talk show to jema abhishek bachchan was invited and uh, uh, he asked one question to abhishek bachchan and and he said ke what brings you to acting why did you choose acting as a career to which he replied ke hu jare acting ma aivo to when i joined acting as a field i always thought that i wanted to become a good actor or a best actor but dheeme dheeme jare main a industry ma kaam karu when i started working in this industry due to the audience or due to the people around me my thought was changed into that i wanted to replicate my dad i wanted to become amitabh bachchan or the bachchan i want to i wanted to save that name and that's where i went wrong because i cannot be what my dad was but i can definitely be what i was and when i started looking on to me as a person i am or as a actor i am it was pretty easy for me to deal with certain things or certain criticism so i always say that one thing whatever happens is always connected with that one thought and that one thought can change your entire life from from top to bottom and from bottom to top so stick to that one thought find out that thought find out what actually uh actually intervenes your into your success or into your a uh, personal life or into your relationship reflect and act upon it this is what what i wanted to say that's absolutely wonderful tabling very inspiring very motivating especially to hear your story about your spinal injury and with that great determination when the world was against you science was against you that you won't be able to walk you never gave up that one thought and the one person who supported you was your dad definitely my dad and the others doctor. didn't support you but no, he was very optimistic in his thoughts definitely and you can imagine what thoughts he went through and what would be very interesting is to analyze his handwriting <laughs> definitely yeah so thank you for such a motivating talk inspirational talk i do have a few questions but before i go on with those questions tavlin you know when you asked the audience is when you heard handwriting is brain writing we have a couple comments that came up on chat box from the asian foundation or i shouldn't say who this is from but i'll say it actually i would say it is from the asian foundation and the first thing they read was so curious was the first trigger that is what they thought curiosity was the first trigger when they heard that 
So they all wanted to know what it's all about. The second one came from probably a good friend of yours, I believe his name is Ankit Trivedi. There's some gentleman who's joined online and he said Ankit Trivedi and he says, when he read the title, he said, psychological aspects of handwriting. Brilliant thought, Ankit. Then came up from an unknown name and it says, maybe it is about what my brain has to say. And once again, the Asian Foundation says, the second thought was, hmm, I've got to send her some of my writing smiles. That was an automatic immediate concentration when I wrote after I heard about graphology amongst a few things. So interesting comments have come up and the topic, the title, handwriting is brain writing, is absolutely thought provoking, creating curiosity. So brilliant. I think based on your story, we would love to ask you a few questions if that's okay. Yes, definitely. Is that okay with you? Yes, definitely, sir. Sure. Now, you earlier said what got you into graphology and the friend who stimulated your thought. But, you know, this is a controversial topic. Are there any myths? Is this just a myth? Or is this really a science? Is this really something that has validation? Can you help us with that? Yes, definitely. Okay, so as as graphologist, when people come to me, they usually come with two thoughts. One is that we act as a as an astrologer or a numerologer. They usually come up and say, "Ke, mara future ma sun thase, or mara past ma sun thay gyuche." So this is one kind of a myth which I which I really wanted to clear, and uh, that is that we are not astrologers. We do not tell you your past or your future. We just tell you your present thoughts. You are the hero of your story. You are the protagonist of your story, and you know your story better. We just tell you the thoughts which are triggering you towards your story. We don't tell you the exact situations, but yes, I can tell you your thoughts which can bring you to that situation or to that consequence. So that is the first myth. The, the second myth as a graphologist which I face is that they they usually come up and say that my handwritings are are kind of i can copy people's handwriting or i can actually uh say make any kind of pattern in my handwriting so how will you be able to justify my thoughts or my writings to which i always answer that this is one kind of myth if you copy or if you try to copy anybody's handwriting they still show some of your inbuilt traits jene apne shuddh gujarati ma prakruti kahiye tame handwriting copy kari shako tame kok na actions copy kari shako pan tame tamari prakruti na muki shako you cannot change your nature and for our uh, work as our, as we as graphologists are always going to stick towards that nature we will always try to figure out that one point that one thought that one character brilliant thank you so much for answering that question and i also wanted to let the audience who have logged in on zoom to tell them that if they have any questions they want answered, please put them on the chat box. We will definitely entertain them. Also for the people who are not logged in on Zoom and are watching us on YouTube or on Facebook as this has gone global right now, any part of the globe, put the question on the Facebook page. Tavlin is going to be going through all the questions. Tavlin, you have a job to do. And she will make sure that each and every question 
would be given at least an answer or a response. So feel free to post your questions on Facebook, on, uh, on the Zoom session and connect with us because this is a very interesting subject and a very natural response from the audience to wanting to know more about it. So moving on to the questions, Tavalin, we got a question from the Asian Foundation actually, and they're saying it's a question on behalf of the board as to say that how is graphology received from people around the globe? Okay, that's a very good question. And uh, yes, uh, it is the awareness about graphology is still not at its peak. But whoever gets connected to graphology is always intrigued with that one thought that how can we change our lives or how can we resolve our problems just by that one change in our writing or just by that one change in our pattern. And why is it so easy to get connected to or as a subject or as a science is because when I talk about meditation, uh, khali besi ne, aank ban kari ne besi ne, nathi hoti. They don't have to do anything within the meditation. So it becomes very much difficult to get connected with that part or that, that science. But when it comes to handwriting, they get connected is because they are having that one pattern which is which is a subject or which in which is in whole a process which they need to follow so ardha thoughts ke ardhi uh, say problems cut down i cannot concentrate or i won't be able to do or money both thoughts away no you just have to change your handwriting patterns or you just have to follow some patterns which are given to you as a form of gra uh, graphotherapy so it becomes easy to connect to and the second most interesting thing is these are some statements जे क्या भी आए ने तोटिवेट करने जरूर नहीं कोई मोटिवेशनल स्पीकर के डॉक्टर भगवत सिंह जडेजा जो कोक जो तमने Uh, lines keva but na nah, these are these are some lines these are some kind of abbreviations which which when comes to you in a form of say statements or facts about yourself it gives you an inner satisfaction ke ha mujhe vicharu chu e khali mara magaj ma nahi this is truth this is my truth this is my reality and either i need to change it or if i want to follow it i need to be ready to face the consequence jare apne apna vishe jaju khabar padva manne ne to that is something which is always an enjoyable journey so yes the awareness is still not at its peak but whoever gets connected is stays for a longer period of time we definitely need to spread awareness about graphology Definitely. Okay, a lovely question has popped up again, uh, Tavalin. Is that uh, from De Devarshi Vyas? And he says, uh, most of us don't give our handwriting a second thought, but yet it is influenced by our behavior. So how are handwriting and behavior connected? We have a few questions, so we'll give short brief answers if that's okay, because there's a few questions I'd like to address too. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So handwriting and behavior are interlinked in a way that whenever you you write a pattern or whenever you think about something that is inbuilt or say it is it is kind of inculcated in your thought process. 
that pattern is kind of inculcated in your thought process. Now, why graphology is very accurate or why handwritings are very accurate? That is because our mind is divided uh, into different parts and it is connected to different parts of our bodies, of our body. But what happens is mind or brain that is connected with our fingers. The larger amount of our brain is connected with our fingers, due to which handwriting has 90 to 95 percent of accuracy to know your traits and your behavioral pattern. Jaratame lokho tiaratame tamara traits ke tamari chap pachar chodo cho. And that's why you you kind of sign with your hands. You have a signature or you have a thumbprint as your signature. That is your identity that shows what you are because your mind is directly connected with your fingers. A larger amount of, say, precision. And that's why it has very much accuracy. Wonderful. Well connected answer there. Next question comes up on the chat box from a lady called Bharti. And she asks that in the current life, which is ruled by technology, where we hardly need to write anything, when we are required to do so, it is really difficult to write because it's difficult to do so legibly. Is this the norm? Is this what you come across a lot because of invention of technology, people are writing less? Yes, definitely. And uh, that's really worrisome because as in when the technology is kind of increasing or say it is evolving, people are really losing their traditions or their, their unconventional behavior. They are really, really not paying attention to the science which, which our ancestors have have really cultivated into our tradition, traditions and, and our uh, customs. But what happens is that be digitalized Thai or jetlu be technology overpower kare, some things are never going to fade away because you will always need a paper and a pen when you want to pen down your ideas, when you want to pen down your emotions. Yes, there may be a generation who is very much comfortable working on their iPads, working on their mobile phones or, or, or pouring their emotions into their uh, screens. But whenever, whenever we actually need to convey it to someone, or whenever we actually need to pour down our emotions. This, I, I don't know if it happens with other people or not, but when it comes to me, I will always need a pen. I will always need a paper. And I guess as, as humans, we should stick down to certain things, certain traditions, which actually gives us a lot of, say, uh, uh, ideas about how to live our life or solves a lot of problems of our lives. Thank you. And, yeah. Thank you. I still have my paper and pen, just so that you know. <laughs> I cannot do the technology way. I still use a lot of paper and a lot of pen. So thank you. Tavalin, actually the Asian Foundation actually is thanking you just in the chat box by saying, Thank you for answering to their questions. So thanks Asian Foundation for asking them. Now, other question that I have also that has come up previously prior we started the talk and the listener is really interested in finding out that how can you be sure that whatever you're predicting about a person in your analysis is 100% correct? I know you said a little bit about the brain finger connection but what are some of the other scientific bases that you can say, yes, you're accurate? Okay. So what happens is that when I go through a sample, I do not tell them the actual situations, what they are going through. I always tell them certain traits. 
now if a person is having a problem with his or uh, her relationships i will always intrigue and point out to that aspect to know more i will always have my set of questions as graphologist to know more about that person so it is never a prediction kind of a thing and it is always a smooth talk which i i need to carry forward as a graphologist to know more about that person and of course i will need assurance from the the other person side but for that i will have to be able to connect to his mind to connect to his thought process second one is i would like to give one example uh this was my first sample which i saw uh early uh, in my early graphology days and what happened was i i told that person that after seeing on to one writing i told that i his writing i told that person that are you controlling on to something are you kind of controlling something in your profession and kind of controlling yourself from doing more work to which he answered that no i am actually doing more than what i am supposed to do and just because it was my first handwriting sample i was not that confident to to kind of counter question and i said okay but after my research of two days i went again and i asked them okay okay tumhe tumhara kaam thi vadhare kaam karo cho but is it something in your life or uh, say is it something in your diet or in your personal life or in your relationship are you controlling on to something to which he replied that yes i am on a keto diet plan and i am controlling myself so as graphologist we always need to have balance of couple of traits to confront the other person as well as we also need to stretch down our brains into every aspect of that individual's life we cannot stick down to one aspect but we need to overall view how it is working or how it is connecting so this is i guess perfect perfect everything tavlin i've got three more questions i want to ask you okay and we will have only three minutes so okay. really a one minute question one minute answers kind of thing okay now what age group is the best for graphotherapy this question came actually about a week ago from one of the persons who received this uh, okay. uh, advertisement for graphology so please if you may what age group is the best for graphotherapy okay uh there is no particular age group which is which is really best for graphotherapy because in each and every age group this is going to work but yes 0 to 14 years is the age group where your belief system is not completely developed where it is in the process of being developed so there the graphotherapy will work faster than anyone else if it takes 3 months of time for an adult to complete his graphotherapy or for uh, or to notice the change through the graphotherapy the child of 0 to 14 years of age will only take a time of 15 days or 20 days to kind of notice a change in himself so it can work with any age at any point of time but then and a uh, age which is more suitable or more convenient to have in writing changes is 0 to 14 years perfect thank you now the next question was uh, that if someone is not willing to agree to your analysis how do you convince a person to follow your therapy then because they're not agreeing with what you're telling them okay this is my favorite sentence and uh, i am coming across this sentence couple of times in last uh, in past days and that is suta hoy ne ene jhagade sua no natak karta hoy ne ene tame na jhagadi shako that's a nice one so i i respect them i tell them what i know as per my knowledge i never try to convince them because they know themselves better than anybody else in the world 
and if they want to change they will first need to follow the step of self realization or self acceptance if they do not follow that step everything is a waste i cannot help them i cannot motivate them i cannot change them it comes from within it comes from within brilliant thank you for that answer lovely answer last but not the least and here you can take a little bit of time i save this question to the last because we are all curious so we can are all asking you can you please give us some general tips in handwriting for overall wellness and happiness take yes. your time answer this question you've got limit but not that stronger limit yeah so yes. take your time to give us this tip yes, definitely so um the first thing which i want to say is that whenever you are writing something make sure you are completing your each and every letter each and every letter should have its own space own breathing space own identity there are people um lagta hoy na to ek ma ek letter entangle thai jaye vachvani ch khabar na pade emne bhi na samjhay ke emne su likhu ch so don't do that avoid doing that try try working in a way which is very simple try writing in a way which is very simple second is whenever you are doing any signature jare bhi tame tamari sign karo cho just add on one thing that is one line under your signature that will give you stability in your profession that will give you stability as a person and the line should go from left to right it should not come back it should go it should move forward always move forward <laughs> i like that thank you yeah and the, the the third thing is that um whenever you are writing okay this also connects with a with some grammatical parts uh whenever you are writing જ્યારે બી તમે લખો ત્યારે દેર આર નાઉન્સ દેર આર પ્રોનાઉન્સ વિથ ઇન ધ સેન્ટેન્સ ઇફ યુ હેવ કેપિટલ લેટર્સ વેર એવર ઇટ ઇઝ નીડેડ દેટ ઇઝ પરફેક્ટલી ફાઇન બટ દેર આર સમ પીપલ હુ વિલ રાઇટ એવરીથિંગ ઇન કેપિટલ લેટર્સ ઇટ્સ નોટ એક્સેપ્ટેબલ જે જેની જગ્યાએ થતું હોય કીપ ઇટ ઇન ધ સેમ પ્લેસ વેર એવર ઇટ ઇઝ રિક્વાયર્ડ યુઝ લોઅર કેસ લેટર્સ વેર એવર ઇટ ઇઝ રિક્વાયર્ડ use upper case letters this will help you in prioritizing your work your goals perfect are those the well i've got them as four tips that you have given us is there any one more tip that you would like to give us um i can share a graphotherapy pattern which is applicable for anyone and everyone to channelize their thoughts it is called flow of thoughts pattern sure that would be very interesting to see how long will that take tavlin one minute i'll just share my screen and i'll just show the pattern perfect perfect okay. yeah so yeah can you all see is it uh, visible we can see the title saying graphotherapy sample but we haven't seen the graph just, just a second just a second yeah now can you all see uh i can't see it no and mina ben can't see it either so if you can open up the file then we can see it uh, yes 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 one minute yeah there we go technical technology works <laughs> definitely yes so this is the pattern which you need to follow can you see my cursor yes how it is moving you need yes. to follow the in the same way now there are two things to keep in mind that is always start your therapy from here that is from the upward stroke and always end it in the 
uh, way how it is ended here. That is the downward stroke. Whenever you are doing this therapy or whenever you are doing this pattern, you will always feel that your thoughts are kind of uh, challenging you or your hand is kind of wavering. Whenever you feel that your hand is wavering, keep a space and start it again. Okay. This pattern you need to follow for a month and do it every day. 30 minus 1 is 0. Please don't have a break. If you are starting it from today, please continue till the end of the month. If you can continue for more time, that is well and good. But at least complete it for one month. This will help you to channelize your thoughts. This will actually help you to, to kind, of, kind of control, have a control over your thoughts your impulsive behavior and choose blue pen or a green pen. And why a green or a blue? Is there a difference in the color? Yes, colors show a lot of things. Blue color is more over, uh, blue color more over symbolizes flexibility and adaptability. While red color will show aggression. Black color will show rigidity. So there are also color therapies, which is kind of a part of graphology. Wow, this is a deep topic, eh? a deep subject. Yes. Excellent. We are very, very happy to have uh, you sharing these tips with us. And I think the tips that you just mentioned about um, completing each and every letter, try working and writing simply, line under the signature going upwards, capital letters where they should be and lowercase where they should be. Those are the brilliant tips that you're giving us and cause I think we all get used to writing a certain way. There has a question that has come up on the chat box and that would be, we'll entertain this for 30 seconds only. Please show the, the, the the therapy again. Uh, this is a, a request from Lalita Samani. Oh, can you see? Yes, we can see it now, Tabling. Yes. Okay, do you want to go through it? Start from the top and at the bottom. Is that correct? Start the top, end it in on a end it here, the downward stroke. And whenever you have any different kind of thoughts or whenever your hands are shivering, please keep a space, start again. And do it on the ruled paper, complete one page in a day. It will just take five to seven minutes to complete the page. And every day for 30 days? Yes, 30 days. And you like a blue your, pen or a green pen. I like your analogy, 30 minus one is equal to zero. Start yes. again. Start again. <laughs> Absolutely, I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Tabulin. While the audience is with us, uh, on the Zoom and also globally on Facebook and YouTube. Tavlin, if one of your friends or somebody can put in, or you can, in the chat box for people to hear or find out where they can connect with you so that people who are on Zoom can connect with you if you give some details of how they can connect. And also on Facebook, when, when, when you're answering some of those questions, would you please post your details? Because this is a very, very interesting topic so if people want to connect with you, they know how to do that. Would that be okay? Share your Instagram yeah. handle, share your Facebook ID, share your contact on the Zoom chat box. I'm sure somebody can put them that those details for you on the chat box. Yeah. So we'll move further on with this, uh, our little session on Zoom tabling. First of all, a, a thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure Asian Foundation feels the same. Um, we move on to the next session of it, which is going to really take only about two up to three minutes. So this is what we call our rapid fire round. And we have about 11 questions that we want you to answer. Now the limitation here is a quick question, a quick answer. Literally okay. the 10 questions should probably finish within a minute, minute and a half, if that, yeah? Are you ready for that? 
Yeah. So the first question for you, Tavaline, for our rapid fire round is Dalai Lama. Okay. Uh, I I would want his handwriting or something which. No, Tavalin, this is just the rapid fire round. So, okay. yeah, your first question on the rapid fire round, and you give a rapid answer to that. Your okay, okay, I got it. Okay, sorry. Okay. Sorry about yeah. Uh, we are going to go through the letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The rapid fire round. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we start the rapid fire round now. The first question, Dalai Lama. His Holiness. Graphology. Passion. Mrs. Nina Kagram. Lovely lady. COVID-19 pandemic. Please go. Handwriting. And art. And art. Social media. An obsession. Dr. Bhagirath Jadeja. My trainer, my guide, my philosopher, and a lot of things. It'll go on. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're not going to tell that to his wife then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question. India. Country. Your favorite Gujarati food? Dokla. Dokla. You're a Punjabi. Your favorite Punjabi food? Rajma Chawal. Rajma Chawal. Ke Rajma Chawal. <laughs> now, being a Punjabi, let's say that you speak absolutely fluent Gujarati, which is so nice. Thank you. Okay, the next question. Lateness. Me. <laughs> I like that. And last but not the least. The rapid fire round of Dr. Lalit Soda. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tavali. Now, for the benefit of the audience, this is something that we love doing with our, our speakers. We love doing the quick rapid fire round and get to the fun part of the, the Zoom session. But today we have, I would request all of you to stay on board for another approximately five minutes, simply because we are actually going to analyze about four handwritings. So, and if we can spend a minute per handwriting session, a letter that we have sent you, these are anonymous people, people who I know, but people who Tavalin don't. They don't know Tavalin, Tavalin doesn't know them. So she's going to interpret or give us, not interpret, but give us an analysis of this particular person. So can we do sample number one, please? Yes, yes. Just a second. Yes, sure. just, just, Take your just, time just. and we'll share the screen. No worries at all. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing that, let me tell the audience on the chat box, we have got Tavalin's contact details chandoktavalin at gmail.com. And I'm going to spell that for you. It's C-H-A-N-D-O-K-T-A-V-L-E-E-N, chandoktavalin at gmail.com. Thank you, Tavalin. We can go on to the first uh, sample, please. There is some, there is some problem. Okay. Can okay. you all see the sample? Yes. Okay. So the the first thing in this sample is that whatever he or she has written, it is it is going in a wave line. The baseline is pretty much wavy. So that is the first thing which comes uh, in my mind as a graphologist. The second is, I can say that this person will always choose upon his or her opportunity. I don't know the name, so I cannot say that. But uh, he will or she will always choose upon his opportunities. He is pretty much uh, kind of the, that person 
uh, whenever it comes to grabbing any opportunity that person will always check upon his or her uh, flexibility or say timings or say convenience to grab those opportunity the second thing is that this person likes to be independent he doesn't he or she doesn't like to kind of uh, uh, say dependent on to other people or his parents or her parents the third thing is that this person will actually need a push to complete his or her work he will or she will never be able to do that work or to complete that uh, task without any support or without any push the next thing is that this person is a quick thinker and slightly a daydreamer <laughs> nice so, one i guess these are the couple of things i could make out perfect and can i ask you one question on this particular one yes. this person has signed and has got a line under their name yes but what happens is that he he or she whoever the person is it the line starts from a it comes back and then it, it goes in front that should not be the thing the line should start from left and it should end at the right wow okay perfect thank you we can move on to the second sample okay can you all see we can see the title but we can't see the letter you cannot see the letter you cannot see the picture no we can't see the picture of it if you click it open it is it is open. yes okay okay so the first thing i would like to tell about this person is that uh, the person is pretty much rude and blunt also very much straight forward okay the next thing is he will kind of say have a relationship which is more balanced he actually he or she actually knows how to how to remain balanced in any situation or in any relationship he he or she knows when to back off and when to move forward to help somebody the next thing is whatever this person will start this person will end that things it will not go with a hassle it will it will not say uh, a kind of remain in a in a in a zone where it is incomplete and the last point is this person will always have a thin line or a, a thin wall between his identity or his family and his identity or to be more precise his family and his profession or her family and her profession okay great and what do you mean by a thin line that is uh if i am this person if i have this kind of writing i will not share each and everything or each and every problem going on within my profession to my family i will always keep it to myself i will always have that that kind of curtain towards my profession uh in front of my family perfect perfect okay lovely and the third sample and there is no line under the signature here what does that signify it signifies that he or she is not 
really stable in the life he he or she is either not stable or it can be either ways he is either not stable or he is not satisfied with whatever he is doing he he or she still feels that i want to achieve something more in my life okay wonderful the third one can you see not yet yeah now can you see perfect yes yes okay so this person has one factor that is can you see my cursor yes the a here is in capitals the h and t here is in capitals without any need it should be in lower case but it is in capitals yes and what does that mean so here it means that this person sticks to words the present situation he is more he or she is more i guess uh, it's a lady so she is more connected towards the present reality how do you know she's a oh yeah okay how do you know it's, she's a lady it's written by casey sorry <laughs> okay yeah uh the second thing is that she does not learn from her past that is whatever goes around in her life she will move on or she will forget but she will not learn that the situation will uh, the situation will keep on repeating itself and then after maybe say four or five times of that occurrence of that situation she will actually learn about how to act or how to react within that situation great and any comments on the signature she will have or she has a very complicated profession or kind of she has she she gets ideas about her profession but that is very complicated she needs to simplify her last last part this part okay lovely last one yes. yes yes can you see the sample yes we can okay uh this person is more over inclined towards activities and actions yes and this person should be placed in a career or or in a profession where it is it is more into activity based or action based if this person becomes a content writer he will not be able to survive because he is more over an action oriented person the next thing is that this person is more culturally inclined the third thing is that this person is loyal as well as obedient and how about the signature the signature shows i guess is this the name of that person or the surname a first name okay first name yeah so then this person likes to be independent and have his or her own identity the person won't stick to 
the family or any external help or any professional identity but will have his or her own identity perfect and you recommended that they write india three times yes. what was the reason for that i just wanted to to check upon the capital i and the lower case i and what can you comment on that, that on this shows, one yes that shows your relationship with your parents your relationship with yourself your relationship with your origins and in this case what as can you I comment on as i said that this person the as i said that this person just write to write down the name the first name so he or she is independent the same is seen in the i there is no line here or there is no line here that means that that person is moreover inclined towards his his or her own decision that person does not stick or does not ask or seek and help from his or her parents perfect thank you so much tavelin now it's interesting how you have actually made all these judgments based on uh, writings and i will actually definitely ask these people to connect with you and and share if they are, this is the truth about them and it will be very interesting for them to connect with you so thank you very much for that it's been an awesome session we've taken a few extra minutes but this was a very very learning experience for most of the audience who have joined in for us as presenters for uh, for Asian Foundation to have been uh, uh, joining in collaboration with us today to again learn all this absolutely satisfied very happy and very thrilled with today's presentation now i'm going to hand over to the current uh, chairperson for Asian Foundation Mr Hasubai Devani and he is the current uh, as i said the uh, chairperson for asian foundation but we all need to know a little bit about him he has served as a member of the governing council of kenya cultural center for two terms he's a team member of the friends of spinal injury hospital and matare hospital these are in kenya he's been a gov governor of aa of kenya and part of road safety committee and director of the safari rally he's also the chairman of the giants group of nairobi conveyor of giants hearing center of nairobi hospital he's the convener of the hospice center phases 1 and 2 and he's the chairman of the giants federation of kenya this guy is multi talented and he wears too many hats he's still a chairman of the association of the safe international road travel He's the National Secretary for the Hindu Council of Kenya. He yes. was also part of the planning and coordinating team in charge of finances for the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, and his visit to, India, uh, to Kenya. He's part of the Stavisha Maisha planning and coordinating team. Currently, he's sitting as the Asia... Um, he currently is the chair of the setting of the Asian African Heritage Gallery at the National Museum in uh, of Kenya and he's the secretary the vice chairman and the current chairman of the Asian Foundation he's none other than our dear Hasubai Devani Hasubai would appreciate if you would have a few words of thanks for our lovely guest speaker Tavelin thank you Hasubai it's all yours thank you Lalibai a few overlaps but uh, uh, i'm the current chairman um, and uh, thank you for welcoming us and hosting uh, this function for us. Uh, one announcement from Asian Foundation, our uh, founder chairman, Manubai Chandaria, um, in a virtual ceremony at uh, House of Lords uh, in UK yesterday, was awarded a Euro Knowledge Leadership and Philanthropy Award. Um, uh, award uh, and there were, I think, 10 of them, and he was number two. So Manubai, congratulations. Um, it, it was a wonderful um, achievement and uh, we are all proud of you. Thank you. And Mina Ben, Om Mane Pembe Hum. And Dalai Lama's photograph at the back. Uh, and uh, the same with uh, Tevlin. 
I, uh, the more important thing on that list was not there. We run Tibet support group from Nairobi. We are in constant touch with Dharamshala. I visit uh, His Holiness uh, regularly, except because of COVID this year, I have not been able to go to Dharamshala. But with all what is happening around the world, especially with China, we have a Zoom calls uh, on uh, various committees. And um, I also uh, work with the Dr. Sange, who is the current uh, uh, president uh, in exile for uh, Dalai Lama. So uh, wonderful uh, starting and uh, Omar Nepembe is, uh, is, is Tibetan uh, chanting, which we really love. So thank you, uh, Minaben. Um, Devlin, what a wonderful uh, subject. We were very curious to know what was, uh, what is happening. I thought uh, if you buy an expensive Parker uh, uh, instrument or a cross, your handwriting will improve automatically. Um, the size and the font and the color and the shape, um, I thought uh, in today's day and age, those things don't mat materialize, you know, because everybody's using iPhones and um, uh, iPads and so on, and so they get it. But, um, you know, like doctors, I li uh, write very fast. And um, sometimes I can't even read my own handwriting after I've written something uh, in, in uh, uh, so much. So, um, but we are all, uh, we learned quite a bit today that um, everything matters. And um, the, uh, the, the main area, the, the, the basic, the thoughts becomes character, you know, the, the, the Point, you, the, uh, you pointed out, and the thought leads to the uh, to the character of our life. I think uh, these are uh, very important. Um, and uh, how do we manage our thoughts? You know, meditation. We work very closely with uh, Brahma Kumari and um, uh, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, and um, a lot of meditation classes. But it is all: what do you do with those thoughts? Do you fight? Do you work? Do you uh, discuss with yourself, or what? and um, focus on outcomes. I think this is the very critical point which uh, we are missing out sometimes. You look for a positive end result and normally it comes there with uh, um, And thoughts is, how do we reflect on it? How do we act on it? Um, these are uh, some very important subject, very basic. And um, the, I think uh, Dr. Jadeja and you both uh, uh, mention one point that uh, children will learn more from your action rather than just talking them in Gujarati and say, look, oh, ayakar ne ayakar. You know, you, if when you pressurize children to do, you switch off TV at eight o'clock and uh, start doing your homework and so on. If you just go on talking, then probably things don't happen. But at eight o'clock, if the TV is switched off and you do your work and children does their own work, then automatically it becomes a habit. So wonderful suggestion. Um, something which people know, but they never implement. Uh, so I, I feel that, uh, Devlin, wonderful subject, something new for us. Um, I think everybody will benefit. I have personally benefited so much. Um, and um, we would like to know more about you and, and, and your subject, you know, because um, graph graphologist is uh, graphologist, isn't it? That is how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah, um, it, it's, it's something very unusual for, for us, um, at, and especially at our age. Uh, we always thought the handwriting can, uh, yes, it plays a role, um, but you never know that uh, that signature is worth probably nothing or is worth a million, you know? Okay. So uh, Lalit Bhai, wonderful uh, host as usual, and I'm sure people have enjoyed. And all participants, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Um, and Manu Bhai's photograph with the Dalai Lama is just showing on the, yes. Um, we have very fond of memories. Uh, in fact, we had Samdong Rinpoche who came and uh, spent 10 days in, with us in Kenya, and we celebrated various programs, including the International Day of Nonviolence. Um, and he spoke so well on Satyagraha that some of our politicians were uh, absolutely bowled over. So uh, now we have a very great memory of uh, uh, His Holiness and his uh, team. Um, so Tavlin, uh, uh, please be in touch with us in one way or the other. And um, anytime you want to visit Kenya, please let us know. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Hasubai. Thank you very much for those Thank very you. kind words. 
Devlin, do you want to say something? Go ahead. No, uh, just Mina Ben. You know, Mina Ben is so great, and yes, um, we, we benefit from her hard work. Um, and we, we every now and then we get these wonderful subjects to talk on. So Mina Ben, thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Uh, we'll we'll piggy bank on your on, on your success. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Asubai. Tavlin, you wanted to say something. Thank Sorry. you. Thank you so much for for giving me this opportunity, and uh, thank you, sir, for uh, actually kind of motivating the young generation. And it's an honor to be in front of you and speak. Uh, and share my views on graphology and the knowledge which I have. So thank you for for being such a good audience and imparting your knowledge too. Thank you, sir. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. And yeah. again, the session doesn't end till our lovely lady, the 75-year-old young, as I called her, and she is absolutely an awesome personality for our Zoom sessions. And she's none other than ever Meena Ben Khagram who will give the final vote of thanks to you, Tavalin. But I personally want to thank you and also Dr. Bhagirat Jadeja. It's because of him that we have you here today, a super awesome personality, a magnetic personality, which everybody gets attracted to. So with that, I will say, um, Meena Ben, if you may, please kindly give your vote of thanks. Meena Ben. Thank you, Lali. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Manu Bhai. Manu Bhai is our constant supporter of my all the session. On behalf of uh, Lalit Bhai and myself, we'd like to thank Asian Foundation, uh, Dr. Manu Bhai, of course, Hasmuk Bhai Devani. Thank you, Manu, uh, Hasmuk Bhai, you spoke so well about me. God. <laughs> Thank you, Mira. She's my friend. And all who have joined us live on Zoom and watching live on Facebook. Devlin, I want to take you home. Can I bring you? Please. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, I, I remember that once when we were little kids in the standard one, two, we were given double line book. And we used to do eight all the time. And now I know why. It hasn't <laughs> changed my life though. <laughs> um, thank you, Ellie. Uh, here he is. You can say hello. I'll also. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ellie. Hello, Devlin. Hello, Lalit. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. And thank you so much, Lalit. You are the backbone of all this program. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for attending. See you next week again. Lalit. Yes, yes, we have another exciting speaker coming up next week. And for that, Meena Ben is going to reveal the details on her Zoom poster on Monday, latest by Tuesday. Watch the space. Connect with us next Saturday, guys. It's going to be rocking. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day and a global namaste to all of you. Thank you for joining in with us. Thank you. Thank you, Lalit, very wonderful program. And uh, Mina Ben.